So, this week the New Horizons probe shot past Pluto at uh, eh, about 14 kilometers per second, which just might sound fast, but you've got to bear in mind that the Earth goes around the Sun at about 30 kilometers per second. So, it, yeah, it went past pretty quick, but it's not as fast as we go around the Sun. Anyway, so it brought back some stunning images from the edge of the solar system. Uh, images of Pluto like this one, which are instantly interesting because of the lack of craters. Right, it's the first thing that you notice on an image of a moon is, you know, how many craters does it have? And the usual reckoning is if you've got a really ancient surface, then um, it's got lots of craters. And if there aren't those craters there, it's the, the moon's been resurfaced. So if you take uh, a moon with a very geologically active, like say for instance Io, uh, going around Jupiter, where the moon is so active that it's turned itself inside out several times over its, its lifetime, this is all from tidal heating from Jupiter, there's basically no craters on the surface. And usually you can do that if you're getting energy, you need to get your energy from somewhere. And if you're near a planet like Jupiter, just the tidal heating alone can dump lots of energy into a small moon like that. However, Pluto doesn't have any such planet to give it the energy. So the first question is, where is the energy coming from? And there really aren't that many ways you can get energy into a planet. I mean, the most obvious one is it can get lit up by the sun. Um, well... You've seen what our weather's like with an atmosphere. Um, we're one astronomical unit away. Pluto is 40 astronomical units away, uh, which, seeing as the light intensity is going to go with the, the square of the distance, that means you're at about one 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 thousand six hundredth of the the sunlight. That's how much less sunlight you get on Pluto than on Earth. So there really isn't a lot of sunlight here, and you can take a look at all the moons that are a hell of a lot closer than Pluto, and the sun's not really giving them any geological reworking. So it's very unlikely that the sun is playing a significant factor here. Another method that you can get these things to heat up is um, radioactive. So... Um, when planets accrete, all the heavy stuff tends to sink down to the bottom. And that heavy stuff tends to be also the radioactive stuff. And as it decays, that heat goes into the body of the planet and it can only be radi radiated out into space from the surface. Now, the bigger the planet, the slower that process happens because you've got less relative surface area to radiate the energy out into space. With small bodies, as you would expect, like, like Pluto, yeah, unless it's got a really dense uranium core in there or something, you really wouldn't expect something like this to be generating that much heat. You would expect it to dump the energy into space far, qu much quicker um, than it can actually accrue in the body. And so you wouldn't really expect any geological activity from radioactivity on something like Pluto. I mean, for certain there are other bodies in the solar system, which again, you know, basically balls of ice like this, where that doesn't seem to be a significant factor. So the question is, where is the energy coming from? And there's only really one other method that you can get energy into these things, and that's basically by a collision of some sort, that it's actually hit something, been smashed to pieces, re-accreted, and that gravi gravitational re-accretion generates heat which is, um, so let, let, let's take a close look at some of these images, okay? I'm going to bring you in up close. So first of all, let's go to this mountain region on another one of these shots. Now again, you've got this a really flat area, and it's got mountains on it. And these mountains are fairly big. They're you know, getting up for the size of the Tetons. Now, usually mountains form when you get two tectonic plates colliding and they sort of buckle a crust and such like and they push up the mountains and those usually come up in ranges and some of these really don't look like they're part of a range they look like stragglers so what the hell's the deal with that um in fact if anything 
What it reminds me of is this picture, which is the famous Face of Mars picture, where you've got all these buttes and the such like, um, which do look sort of fairly isolated in a flat plane. And what I suspect this is, I don't actually know, um, that I suspect this is very much geologically like the um, uh, whatever the Kaibab Plateau sort of area where you've had a load of sediment put down, the whole area's been uplifted and then it's eroded away and these are the bits that are left after the whole lot's been eroded away sort of thing. Um, so you, you can get buttes like that and I don't know if that's correct or not but but, you know, that seemed desperately unlikely on Pluto, because there's just not the energy to do it. Um, the other one, it also it does actually look like some of these are sort of erosional features. Uh, and also, you'll notice the stunning lack of craters. I mean, there were craters on some of the other pictures, like this. There are, there are craters here, and there's some decent ones down by the, by the rim, I think. Yeah, there are craters here, and there are eroded craters. Um, anyway, coming back to our image of um, whatever. The other thing this reminds me of is the Mares on the moon. Um, yeah, so our moon is obviously mostly made of rock um, which melts much higher. Um, Pluto is mostly made up of stuff that will melt, you know, water and such like. But what happened, or they think happened with the moon, is obviously you you had two things smashed together and the debris accreted to form the moon, and one, it's, while it's accreting, it's generating a lot of heat, right? Just actually getting a pile of dust and rock and such like and condensing into a planet, as those things fall towards each other and hit each other, they generate heat. And that basically caused the melting that caused these great resurfacing events on the moon. So, and there are mountains on the moon as well. So, it does kind of remind me, coming back here, to the Mares on the moon. But, um, yeah, again, this is sort of mostly ice and the such like at some desperately low temperature. Whereas this is mostly, you know, the moon, wherever it's gone, is mostly rock and melt, melt till you know, best part of a thousand degrees or something. So, um, yeah, uh, you, you could sort of almost convince yourself that these do look sort of mare-like, you know, like they, like the resurfacing events on the moon. Um, but that would mean that this thing's been smashed pretty hard and recondensed somehow. Um, and this is another interesting, this is another one of these um, pictures on Pluto uh, where the whole thing does look like it's been resurfaced. Now I've seen patterns very similar to this and they're on the moon Triton. This is Triton, um, which is a moon of Neptune. And you see these patterns here are very similar. Um, okay, so zoom in on these, these guys, that's a pretty similar pattern to these guys. So these moons are very similar. So Triton and Pluto are very similar in size and composition. Triton also has all this sort of geological activity, but most of that geological activity, in fact at this point I'm going to come over to Celestia. So welcome to the universe, uh, or more to the point our solar system. And if I come out enough, there we go, there's our solar system. Pluto is the one on the outside, okay? Um, so let's go to the Earth, um, just to give us, because uh, I've got time ticking over on this thing fairly quickly. In fact, I've got time ticking over on this at 1,000 times regular speed, which means that an hour takes about yeah, four seconds, give or take, and so at this speed, a day will take about a hundred seconds or something. So that 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 just gives you the sort of time frame that we're looking at uh, for the rest of the solar system. So the one thing that you notice is everything in the solar system basically rotates counterclockwise 
then the Earth goes around the Sun counterclockwise, the Moon goes around the Earth counterclockwise. So if I go to another planet with lots of moons like Jupiter, I uh, might get my... Um, and yeah, we see that Jupiter is rotating counterclockwise and all the moons are rotating counterclockwise, especially the big ones. Now there's one exception, one big exception to this in the entire solar system, and that's Neptune, where if I get it right, there we go, there we go. So everything again, the yeah, planet rotates counterclockwise, all the moons rotate counterclockwise, with one exception, which is Triton, who actually goes around clockwise, right? Everything else rotates counterclockwise apart from Triton. Now to capture a moon is actually fairly difficult, especially to capture a big one. And the reason is that if you actually fall, if you're a stray asteroid or something, and you fall into the gravity well of Neptune, because of conservation of energy, you just leave with exactly the same amount of energy you came in with. You're not captured. right? So there's only two ways that you can actually lose energy and get captured. Um, by a planet. And the first one is you actually gravitationally couple with something and the second more obvious one is you actually smash with something. So um, it's it's by no means a new idea that, I mean for certain Triton, just from eyeballing it, uh, Triton and um, uh, Pluto are very similar objects. Um, and the, the, the interesting one is how the hell did this get resurfaced? Um, and yeah, this comes back to this old idea, which is you know, it's been bounced around lots, but mostly dismissed, is the the reason that Triton's got this weird retrograde orbit. And also, in fact, if I come all the way out, so Triton's got this weird retrograde orbit. And Pluto's got this really strange orbit as well. Really doesn't fit in with everything else. Um, are maybe related. Um, and if we actually go into Pluto, um, is it also possible the reason that Pluto's this sort of um, you know, mismatch of small moons, this one missing, I think it's Kerberos, um, is because there was a smash that basically caused a lot of the resurfacing. Yeah, that's basically where the energy came from for a load of the resurfacing that you see here. And um, that would also be the thing that allows you to, to, to get Triton into this weird orbit around Neptune. Um, like I say, it's mostly been um, written off in the, in, in the literature. But it's one of those things. Um, the reason they write it off is the orbits don't look quite right. Well, things like that you can get around quite easily. You just need a third body in there, um, which is left or collided with something else. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting speculation. The, you, the, the these do sort of look like a bit kind of kind of like Mares. Anyway, so those are my thoughts on the. Uh, the new images of Pluto.